We have been, we are talking about the Wikimedia Conference, which is the annual event for the Wikimedia affiliates together, together with the representatives from the Wikimedia Foundation and also from different committees to discuss um, the future strategy of the Wikimedia movement, but also to share learnings and experiences around um, issues that touch the organizational uh, level of, of our movement. So they are mainly like functionaries coming to this conference, around 200 people we had there this year. And yeah, we have been organizing this event for several years in a row, um, yeah, kind of in a row, but it has always been decided every year, um, like every year new, who is going to um, host the conference. So there has no, not been a, an ongoing process there. And um, two years ago we said, okay, we are going to do the conference again, but only if we will do it for the next three years in a row. And if we can have a dedicated staff members who support the whole program process and so on. And now we are in the, in the second year. We have done this conference uh, in 2016 already. It was in April. And um, we would like to share some experiences around um, how we approached um, yeah, the conference and the creation of the program. Um, just a second. Okay. So yeah, and we were like facing some some issues around this, problems with this. So first of all, um, the program was often created very um, like only like a few weeks before before the conference and people did not really come prepared. So they just came to Berlin, went there to discuss uh, several issues, but they didn't have the chance to prepare because um, because there were no like documents beforehand and they didn't really know if there were any decisions to be made and so on. So um, um, yeah, they came in to Berlin, had three days of fun and also working um, working days, but yeah, then in the end there were no real documented outcomes. Um, be, uh, there was, of course, some kind of documentation, but it was a little bit unclear what the what the real results were, and of and also um, what the next steps will be. So there, are different topics are being touched, and they are just uh, exchanged uh, thoughts and experiences. But what will be next? What will happen next? And what will happen after the conference? Um, and there was a thing that, it, like as I said before, it started again. Um, year after year, and people started or had the discussions they had already in the in the previous year, and so on. And so there was no real. Um, it was not really the conferences were not really connected um, to each other. And as I said, it was no. It was unclear what the next steps will be. We felt that the conference was not really sustainable, and. Um, yeah, we wanted to change this and um, have really been thinking about this and discussing this with several people and we kind of invented um, something that we would like to, to share with you. Um, we um, yeah, thought that uh, doing or uh, investing more resources, more time, more thoughts into program and engagement coordination, um, which yeah, it's a kind of a new model we we yeah, invented and we are still experimenting with and um, coming with the uh, program and eng engagement coordination, we um, created the role of the program and engagement coordinator who is uh, standing right next to me, Cornelius, and he took over this, this role and this res responsibility to take the conference to a next level and he's now going to talk about how we did this. Thank you, Nicole. So, the program and engagement coordination is a concept, as Nicole said, developed by us, and it consists in several parts, like before the conference, during the conference, and after the conference. So, no. we practically totally re-ramped or refurbished the entire program design process, because until, like for the last conferences, it was always normal that we had a program committee with several people, around 10 people, and um, it was quite hard to, to actually design a good program with them because it was really diverse, but it wasn't really active and it didn't fulfill the actual needs and wishes of the participants of the conference. So 
we developed like for this for this year we developed a survey and we created the whole program of the of the Wikimedia conference along the needs wishes and experiences of the participants because because the the feature of this conference is that we know the amount or the names of the participants even uh, like three months ahead before, like three months before the conference, so we can actually work with them together in a participatory program design process. We can work, we can see what do they need, what can we, yeah, what can we propose, what kind of sessions do they need, what, what, what do they want to learn, actually. Yeah? So inside the survey, we also ask them, okay, you're at the conference, how can you actually contribute to the conference? So the, what can you share, what kind of learnings you can share? And uh, at the same time, we ask what you need, what you want to learn. So we did an internal matching, and most of the participants um, of the Wikimedia conference are also speakers at the same time. So, like, it's we don't invite or rarely invite external speakers to come to the conference, but most are, yeah, recruited. Let's say that in in from the from the audience. And um, what we also did is, is the Wikimedia conference, as Nicole said, is a closed conference. It's a, a closed conference for functionaries. So um, organizations, depending on the type, are uh, invited and are able to send um, delegates or representatives. But and we we wrote a guideline to for the for the organizations on the guideline or like let's say. Um, yeah, a description, a, a briefing. Let's call it a briefing. How to choose, actually, the, the how to choose the delegate or the representative. What kind of delegate we would love to have at the Wikimedia conference? For instance, just giving an example. For the first time this year, the conference had a main topic. The main topic was movement impact, and we asked the organizations, if you have people uh, who are really interested in discussing impact and uh, discussing how we want to measure impact, how we want to move forward in the Wikimedia movement with that really difficult but important topic, please let them come to the Wikimedia conference. We need their expertise. And um, while for the Wikimedia conference also, we thought about actual the session design because session design is not I, I, we wanted we didn't want to we didn't want to have a conference where people just show off in a way their knowledge but actually can share their learning and they uh, the audiences or the, the participants can actually learn something from them so you should go from the conference which act, which with actual learnings and outcomes so um, most of the sessions weren't actually presentations, but workshops and um, yeah, well, discussions. Yeah. So, and um, for, we thought about the specific needs, and so we created specific sessions for um, these needs or for the topics. So we had a we had also a session which was emotionally really difficult, and we, we, hired, we, uh, we hired or we invited an external facilitator who knows especially how to, yeah, how to treat these emotional, how to, how to solve emotional conflicts and how to, how to, yeah, how to get along, no, not get to get along, but how to manage them, yeah, how to manage emotional conflicts. So this was really some, something new. And we also ask the speakers in advance to actually prepare their sessions as poss possibly also to, to upload their, their, um, their slides in, in beforehand. And um, also to, to say to the participants, what should they prepare for the session? What, what do, you, do you need to have prepared for the session, yeah? If you want to actually participate, because we also Call our, or we call our participants participants, not attendees. They're not just attending, they're there for participating. It's a, actually, it's a working conference. It's a conference for working, learning, thinking, and discussing. So it's not, uh, it's not just to be there and yeah, see people, watch people talking, but it's actually to be there, to be engaged. Yeah? Coming to regional conferences, it's also about building actual bridges to other conferences because we want to have movement conferences connected to each other. So, because um, thematic strands or thematic conversations don't stop at one conference, they are yeah they we're discussing all over the year, but we have to 
we have to find we have to find some thematic continuity um, in these thematic strands. So, for instance, here at Wikimania, we already did that last year, we organized a pre-conference day on Wikimedia conference follow-up topics. So I asked speakers to present or to uh, organize workshops on the most important topics of the Wikimedia conference. So, uh, so that's the way to build actual bridges. Well, I call them programmatic bridges. I've also attended the CE meeting last year, and I'm, uh, I will be also at the next IberoCorp conference. So to, to motivate people to, to discuss the topics of the Wikimedia conference so that we can yeah, carry the thematic torch through the year. And um, what my intention is also to, to ask people, to ask the speakers, okay, your engagement doesn't stop after the conference, yeah. So, how do we move forward with that? And um, my, in my in an ideal world, we have many communities of best of practices who work actually on certain topics. So, we've already managed to create a, a community on practice on partnerships and external fundraising, which are working closely together on how to, yeah, how to gain more knowledge in, around that topic um, among chapters. And we also try to share a lot of our learnings because this is an, I would say it's an innovative concept, at least it's a pilot, we have never done this before, it's a global issue, it's not an issue that only touches Wikimedia conferences but also other conferences. So we write a lot of learning patterns, we write a lot of reports so other people can learn from us and can see what, what kind of knowledge they can adapt to their events and conferences and so and we would love to see them adapted. And we also give some sessions, like talks, like this one, to share actually our learnings. Yes, thank you, Cornelius. And um, yeah, as Cornelius said, we are really eager to talk about this with anyone who's interested in that and uh, to share the, also the thoughts, also probably some of the, the challenges that we have faced and our recommendations for um, people who are involved with organizing events and, and uh, designing programs um, is really to try to um, focus or to extend the thematic continuity so that if you have an event then make sure or try to figure out how to best keep, uh, pe keep people engaged like throughout the year or at the next conference or how to build these bridges that Cornelius was, was talking about. Um, also fostering the exchange between events, as I, as I said, and also between the participants and speakers of the events is, is an essential thing. Um, we would like to encourage other event organizers to, to also keep an eye on and to try and figure out, because this, of course this concept doesn't work for all conferences. I mean, for Wikimania, for example, it would be like very different because you cannot really you can compare some of the some of the aspects but not not everything so it would be individual an individual concept for for different conferences but still i think the main um challenges and is issues keep keep the same um also what we have experienced uh, experience that people sometimes f focus a lot on the logistical part because that's the thing that you have to do. You have to organize everything because otherwise the event uh, will not take place. Um, and we would also like to encourage people um, to, yeah, to, to stress or to focus on, on the quality and figure out what is the best way to design a program. Do you work together with a, with a program team or do you hire an external facilitator who helps you with this or do you want to have a program and engagement coordinator as well? So think about how, to, how you can uh, take your conferences to the next level and yeah, uh, just keep on improving. There are so many things uh, we, can, we can figure out, um, we can try, we can experiment on, we can fail with, but then improve it uh, in, the next, in the next year. And of course, we've also experienced some things that didn't work so well, but we're trying to uh, keep, keep on improving and that would be my yeah, final recommendation here as well. So um, yeah, do this and 
we are here now for all your questions and and also for your ideas to probably make this even better and you can of course also approach us um, throughout the conference or send us an email or write on our meta pages or whatever you like so thanks a lot for your attention And we have time for questions? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jane? Shall I? Yeah. One of the things that I'm always annoyed about when it comes to um, Wikimedia conferences is that you have this great landing page with the program and everything, and you have links for the pages for the program. But then once it's over, that sort of gets archived in its initial stage, right? It would be nice if there would be some way during the conference to like get people to actually contribute to the talk pages of those presentation pages so that you have some sort of reaction or some sort of inter in indication that there's a link out to comments to the, you know, the taped uh, thing or whatever, but that people can actually have some sort of feedback so that you are creating an archive as you go along instead of having to create work afterwards getting a survey in or something like that. I don't know if you've actually looked at that idea of how to... Um, exactly, I'm, I'm totally with you because um, <laughs> we have, like for every session at the Wikimedia conference, we have one page on the meta wiki and after the conference I developed them and added all this, uh, the summary and all the pictures and uh, so I turned it into a documentation from the original description page to an actual documentation page for each, each session and afterwards I asked the, the speakers or I would call them maybe a thematic ambassadors, so the people who care about a, uh, who care about a specific topic to link to these pages, so that people actually can find the documentation. So, uh, just an example: Dimi is our great hero about uh, advocacy and lobbying for in the EU. So he also gives regularly sessions at the Wikimedia conference, and he then um, supports me in the documentation, and then he links it back. So uh, we've, they, they, these strands are connected. So he's the kind of carrying the thematic torch with the support of the documentation of the Wikimedia conference. Does this go that in the correct direction? Yes, you're saying that I can find a little chain of Dimitri um, uh, presentations sort of in order going back to front. Yeah, that's what I would like. Yeah. I mean, I of course love going to conferences, but then, you know, I go back and, you know, there is just so much other work that, you know, you completely forget about, you know, doing the follow-up or, you know, properly connecting, you know, the, the conversation you had the conference before with the conversation that follows. So one of the most annoying things that is when, you know, Cornelio starts chasing after you to tell you, you know, you have to do this, but I'm always grateful for that because that helps me just, you know, bridge, um, the topic, I mean, it just stops us from having circular conversations where we discuss the same things over and over again. And we actually now, for the, it was, I think, the third time in a row that we are doing this. And I actually feel, well, now, you know, I had a meeting with my group at, I think, the follow-up day. And we picked up more or less where we left off. We discussed what happened in the past few months, what will happen in the next few months. And that was it. It was, it, it felt great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for this presentation. Um, I wanted to follow up on this comment about the logistics because I've been involved in organizing many unconferences, bar camps, open spaces, stuff like that. And my experience is that once you sort of have figured out the logistics, then every, the, the conference almost there and everybody's so exhausted that you don't never get to the fun part, uh, you know, incorporating the best practices and stuff like that. So I was wondering if you had any suggestions on how to avoid this. I know it's a hard question. Every year we say, oh, we're going to do it next year, so. <laughs> So first of all, I think start early with this. Start as as soon as you start like searching for a venue or something like this. Also start uh, the program design process and probably find more people to support you with this. If you have a team of people who are responsible for the logistics and um, yeah, have a have a I don't know a team or most probably one or 
um, one responsible person who coordinates this team and give it the same attention as you give the, to the logistics. I mean, it sounds probably like an easy solution. It might be tough, but I think um, it's, a long, it's also a long-term thing and you need to, uh, yeah, need to think about this early on. I don't know if this depends also on the conference because if you're a series of conferences obviously you know that we are organizing the, the next Wikimedia conference next year so we're already planning for the next year of course and um, the other thing is that we this are uh, the conference is organized by a team of four people we are both are taking care of the program especially me and we have two wonderful ladies, colleagues, that are working on the events, so on the, on the logistics. So we have different roles, and we're not mixing really the roles. It's like really good that they can focus with their expertise on logistics, and we can uh, focus on programs. So we're closely together, but on different things. <laughs> and this, this helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It helps a lot, but we also have to say that we are in a very luxury position that we are all staff members. We can put a lot of time and resources into this, so it's probably not comparable to everything. Welcome. Being that you're awesome people, I assume this is documented very well on, on several pages. In what way are you working with the next Wikimania organizers to make sure that they follow up and document everything that's done and talked about during these days, during last Wikimania, next Wikimania, to, to make sure that Wikimania is documented in the same good way as the Wikimedia conference? I mean, we have been talking about this concept with them, um, and we have um, also been talking about which of the conference issues can be discussed here at, at Wikimania and so on, but um, I think that would mean another, that, that they would need more support in this, um, because I don't know if the program committee would be willing or able in doing this, because this is not a standing committee I, uh, from what I understand, so our recommendation would also be for Wikimania to have a standing program committee so that people, uh, like a gro global uh, program committee who carries the torch uh, like every year, so that will be our recommendation and we yeah, probably invent a program and engagement coordinator for Wikimania as well, so. <laughs> well, the thing is that every year you have an, another program coordinator for the, for the Wikimania and sadly they are not as well connected, so. Um, we try to share, share our learnings. We say documentation is key. Please document it. Please tape record the, the sessions up. And ideally, you would live stream that. But um, we can only say how we are doing this, and we cannot force them. Yeah? So, especially if Wikimania happens only every second year, it will be even harder, yeah? to be honest. So, um, we will see what happens. But we do our best, to be honest. We really try it, but it's, yeah. Program coordinators for Wikimania are mostly volunteers. So it's even harder for them, because mostly they're not, they're not paid. As Nicole said, we're in a luxury position that we are both paid staff. And we can actually dedicate full time for this event, or full passion. <laughs> Any other questions, remarks? Comments? Concerns? Concerns? <laughs> but I, I just wanted to add, I, I would like really to see more regional conferences to happen. So we, are, we have the Ibero, Ibero Corp conference, Ibero Conf, and we have the CE meeting. And there is now, by end of the year, maybe the next Wiki Indaba, the African conferences. But I would love to really see more regional conferences so we can bring the topics actually more to the volunteers because um, traveling to Wikimania is, um, is not easy and not cheap for everyone. So we, but we need, these topics are really important. So I would love to see spread over the regions. And um, 
if you're organizing a regional conference for more than a community, approach me and we can see how we can build bridges to these conferences. And I can, we can also suggest speakers. So we really, we're really interested in shared our learnings and our contacts because we know also specific speakers for specific topics. Don't hesitate to contact us. Okay, another issue is also language, of course, because it would be really great when you have a conference that you actually have something for the people who are staying at home that they can actually follow along. And then it would be really great if you had some sort of way of summarizing, just a key summary in various languages. So it would be nice to have like a translation team just to do the key summaries so that people can see, okay, this is happening now, and then it's their choice whether or not they want to follow up on it. That would be, I think, the next level of the Wikimedia conferences. Well, languages, yeah, it's not easy to no. translate that, everything. <laughs> it's everything is English, it's English. It's everything is English because actually it's the only language we can communicate with each other, so. Sadly, but it is how it is. Okay. So yeah, thanks everyone for being here. Thanks and see you soon.